So while I was waiting to replace my hotspot, basically my hotspot device itself, um, it just wasn't working out. And so I decided to change up the hotspot, change up my hotspot provider. Also, the hotspot didn't, it was a reseller package that didn't do as promised. I was supposed to have unlimited no throttle and it didn't work out. That wasn't what it was. I was getting throttled every month and for a while I just let it go. But I was like, I could actually get an unthrottled account like I could afford it and so I decided to let go of that hotspot also the device itself started acting up and I wasn't going to replace a device for a service that wasn't working out so I let it go and that meant having a little bit of time where I did not have a personal wi-fi hotspot in the van I personally prefer having a wi-fi hotspot in a fan yes there is free wi-fi a lot of places but it's it's semi insufficient like it's really hard to get a signal like in the van like most of the places i've found the only way to get a good signal is to actually go in and patronize the place the other choice is the library but i was finding my schedule just wasn't working out for using the library as frequently as i wanted to be able to use the internet for things like uploading videos to youtube um and where the uploading was taking so long that you know the amount of time i would have had to sit there interfered with other tasks i wanted to complete during the day so trying to exploit free Wi-Fi in expected and unexpected places, expected places being like the library and everything like that, and unexpected places being like trying to like grab a little Starbucks Wi-Fi while in the parking lot. It just wasn't working out. I also didn't like being strapped down. I There was a place I found where I was getting cranking Wi-Fi from a, a supermarket, but... I didn't want to go back to that spot all the time. There were also a lot of RVs and vans around that spot, which just made me more obvious because I was probably I was there for the same reason they were. And it's not so much that I agree. I'm kind of one of those anti-stealth people. I'm like, just do your thing and live your life. Try not to sort of interfere with the flow of life. Keep your car clean. And I feel like you'll be lucky in most cases if you're following those rules. But... What people don't want to see is a concentration of vans or RVs or cars or whatever they know are occupied living in the space. Because then it starts to feel like, oh, this is turning into a trailer park. And I don't have anything against trailer park. I think trailer parks are cool. You mean a place where I could just pull my vehicle in and rent a spot for a limited amount of time and then leave? That doesn't sound like a horrible thing to me. But the stereotype of trailer parks are bad. So when people start feeling like their neighborhoods or their shopping areas are turning into trailer parks, that negative stereotype carries with it of drug dealers, crime, blah, 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 blah. And I've heard all this stuff spouted. So just for my own comfort and not because I feared the other van dwellers or believed in any of that nonsense, but just because I like just, I like the privacy of my life. And so I wanted a Wi-Fi service. I didn't have to use lockdown in the spot or by going into a business and not patronizing it and, you know, going through that whole thing, trying to find plugs in there, which is the half the benefit. Um, It was just I wanted Wi-Fi that I paid for in my van in my home. And I knew that it was possible, but the service I had was insufficient, and I was looking for another service. And in between, I was like, well, Xfinity hotspots are, like, everywhere. Why don't I use one? And so I logged online, and um, what you do is basically you go to where an Xfinity hotspot is, and if you connect your device to it, it'll give you an offer screen where you can pay for a Wi-Fi pass. Um, I tried to get my phone and my iPad and my Chromebook to pull up the screen and only my laptop, which is a Chromebook, was successful. For all the other ones, it just wasn't allowing me allowing me to connect. So when you get to the Xfinity page and you want to buy a Wi-Fi pass, you're offered a couple of options. You're offered a one hour pass for 395 
a two-hour pass for four ninety-five, and it might be different from area to area, but this is for me. A day pass for eight ninety-five, a week pass for about twenty bucks, and then a thirty-day or a month pass for like sixty bucks. And you can also get a complimentary hour. So if you're in a quick spot and you need like a complimentary hour of Wi-Fi, and there's an Xfinity hotspot near you, they'll give you an hour, which is great for like sending a quick email or like something in that regard something really quick simple and fast that complimentary hour works out really great or if you just want to test out the service or or it's speed in your area you can use that complimentary hour i had had a good experience with buying a day pass before but i was in a spot where i knew i was getting a good signal what i wanted was a 30-day pass to check out this parking around the city like I usually do. Um, when I say the city, I mean the, the city of Berkeley. Is it a town or an area? I don't know. It's part of Alameda County. But specifically, I was around Berkeley and Oakland, and I wanted to be able to use this 30-day pass wherever I parked. Well, first of all, it was crap. Like, half the time, I couldn't log on. I was getting booted off all the time. Like the signal was just generally crap. This is not a replacement for getting a personal mobile hotspot, which if you can afford it, I think you should have. Like you're always going to get more value out of that than playing ring around the hotspots. Now, some people also have hotspots off their phone. If you have a really good deal that's working for you financially, also do that. Um, When I initially switched to Walmart Family Mobile, I had a little bit of hotspot on my phone i switched to a cheaper plan because now that i have my new hotspot service i don't need a hotspot service on my phone so i might as well cheapen my phone bill so i cheapened both my phone bills so that i could pay more for a mobile hotspot that would serve all of my devices and not just have one device that had the quote unquote most wi-fi power but using the hotspot off my phone was more effective than using this xfinity wi-fi pass Also, another thing I was disappointed about is when you sign up for it, it only works on the device you signed up on it for. So it only worked on my Chromebook. I couldn't use the pass, passes login for my iPad or my phone. It could only be on the Chromebook, which some of the, one of the main things I like to use my Wi-Fi for is, you know, in the evening, I might want to buy, watch some Netflix or Hulu, which are the only two services I have. They're both relatively cheap. It's like 16 bucks a month. And I've even been able to like, you know, uh, for Hulu, I've never tried it with Netflix, just been able to suspend the service for a month or two if I don't want it. So like my entertainment is only like 16 bucks a month, which is way cheaper than cable and the cost of me having an internet connection. Um, and I think I've finally found the good mix of cell phone service and internet connection mobile hotspot that works for me. And Xfinity was not it. It was only a test for a month. I knew the service that I was aiming for getting and and I eventually got it, but this was it was just a mess. It just wasn't worth it. I don't feel like I got my money's worth for for $60 a month. I believe Verizon unlimited hotspots and Verizon is everybody's top-notch service is like what 65 or something like that a month. Like for like $10 more a month and the cost of the the one-time cost of the device, I could have had much better service than the Xfinity hotspot provided me. So there were times, like I said, there were times I couldn't connect. Most of the time my signal was like weak. Like I don't know how many times I had like a, a weak signal. And then if I watched, usually if I streamed like an episode on Netflix, cause I remember I was watching season two of the OA. If you haven't seen that on Netflix, it's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of one of those shows you ever think this is really brilliant or this doesn't work like, or you're confused about it. Like, I don't know. I personally loved it, but the point is I streamed an episode of your standard one hour drama and then by the second episode it was skipping out on me and then it went out for like 20 minutes and then it like reconnected and i know what you're thinking i have reflectix on all of my windows well the thing is during the day a lot of times i'll take those down i haven't just because i'm sitting here talking and stuff and i think if somebody saw me doing that it'd be weird weirder than stillness in the van but um a lot of times i'll take those down and i would do that like i would pull out 
one of my window covers um, or two and try to see if the signal got better. Also, I would use it from my front seat with no window covers up and the performance was the same. Like the performance never changed no matter where I was in the van. If I was in the front, I could do a couple of things for a while and then the service would skip out for a while and then it would reconnect. Um, and then the same thing in the back, the service will skip out for a while and then we'll rec- reconnect. In a pinch, I don't think an Xfinity day pass is a bad thing. Like, if you're, like, sitting somewhere and Xfinity, uh, comes up and you're like, I'm sick of fighting with the free Wi-Fi and it's just not working, like, paying for an hour or two of use is great, but trying to get it to, like, function as sort of a no hot spot city system, which is what I was really testing. Like, could you not pay money for a hotspot if you're mostly in cities and not doing a lot of rural van life? Could you use this without having to invest in a hotspot? Because the cost is about the same. It's around 60 bucks for 30 days. But it just, it was not, it was not. I would say if you can find a service that's similar, that's either NetBuddy or or the Verizon Unlimited, or another service that is offering unthrottled internet. And there are actually more than I expect, because I did a bunch of online research, and you would think it stopped at NetBuddy and Verizon. There are actually some other services out there that full offer unthrottled data plans. Some of them are, almost all of them are resellers, usually of AT&T or Verizon. And for the investment of the hotspot, which is going to be your big investment, it's like switching phones providers. When I went from Virgin Mobile, which is a Sprint, basically uh, under the Sprint umbrella, to Walmart Family Mo- Mobile, which is under the T-Mobile umbrella, the biggest investment in that change wasn't the monthly amount. Um, it was what I was getting for that monthly amount, but the big change also was having to invest in the new device, which is usually your biggest event investment when you jump ship. Um, you can avoid some of this by getting unlocked devices, but usually like once you change providers, you also need to get a new device that works with that provider, especially if you go from a GSM to whatever the other type of provider is. Sprint is that, whatever it is. Um, AT and T-Mobile, I think are both GSM. I'm not sure about Verizon. Um, but if you change that, you definitely have to get a new device, even if it's unlocked because it won't work. An unlocked GSM device will only work on a GSM service provider. So, yeah, but the point is, usually, 9 out of 10 times, when you jump ship on your provider, you're going to be buying a new device as well, and that's your biggest investment. And my big question with Xfinity is, could you avoid that investment and just pay for a 30-day pass consistently? Again, especially if you were staying in urban areas where there are a lot of Xfinity hotspots. Now, what I will also say is if you have a friend who has Xfinity in their home, definitely see if you can get their login because every once in a while that Xfinity Wi-Fi connection might be really useful to you. Like I said, jumping on a set and send a quick email or to do a quick check-in or to reply to somebody real quick, it it's great for that. It was so-so for streaming and also the connection was not reliable even with me staying in like what I would consider a major urban environment. Um, where the big four are pretty equal. And that's the good, you know, the good thing about a city. Like once you start getting out into the middle of nowhere, the strength of your provider really makes a lot of difference. In cities, I would say it's almost equal. Like really, you could go with almost anybody and it's probably going to work in more, more instances than not. Like people are like, oh, I'm worried about my steady connection. Probably if you're like in the middle of San Francisco and if there's somebody out there who wants to prove me wrong, it's a major city. Every provider out there is going to have a decent tower or two in a major city. And once you start getting out to the desert in the middle of Arizona, like that's going to change for you. And so that's where it matters sort of who your provider is and and how, you know, widespread they are because you're trying to catch towers in, in a more rural area. And so you're looking for coverage 
that is more likely to be spread out so they can have that big call of saying, hey, we're damn near almost everywhere. And that's what usually makes the bigger providers, you know, bigger than the smaller providers. And the resellers, just make sure you read the fine print to know if you'll be sort of deprioritized in, in, in the lineup, i.e. a person who has directly bought from Verizon is, isn't being prioritized over you or a person who's directly bought from AT&T isn't being prioritized over you. And it may make no difference for how you need to use the internet. I mean, that's the grand question. How do you need to use the internet? How often are you using it? I really wanted an unlimited no throttle account. When I first started this journey, I couldn't find one that fulfilled my needs. I eventually did find one and I am so are happy with the service but I haven't had it for 30 days I wasn't even planning to activate the service until the end of my Xfinity Wi-Fi account but it's been so insufficient I just went ahead and took the plunge a little earlier than planned which upped sort of what I usually pay in a month but I'm in a good enough position right now um, that that's okay which is funny considering a couple weeks ago I was like I'm, I'm dead broke but that's the good thing about van life being so cheap or at least cheaper than <laughs> other options. And I think we need to make that distinction. There's a difference between cheap and cheaper. Those are two different things. Like van life is cheaper than uh, house life. What I would have had to pay, you know, to have Wi-Fi in an apartment actually might not have been that that different, to be honest. But the efficiency of it and the options of it would have been better. Um, and it's a little more challenging in vehicles, but it's getting better. I mean, now you can actually get Wi-Fi in your car. Like, your car can have Wi-Fi. Um, I'm not sure how that works or what vehicles it goes to, but I know that it's out there and I haven't fully investigated it. So it's getting a little better if you live in a vehicle, vehicle dwell, or in RVs, whatever, to have Wi-Fi options that you can carry with you. I mean, they would be stupid not to catch up with this. Um, even for people who just want a road trip or people who travel frequently, they want to know they're going to have a dependable connection, even if they're, you know, in planes, trains, and automobiles. You, it, you, if your work or the work you're doing on a daily basis depends on you having a Wi-Fi connection, hoping that you catch a place where you can get Wi-Fi along the way, um is a gamble and like it's a pretty good gamble like i have wi-fi is in some weird places like i've been next to businesses and just on a lark open my phone and been shocked that there's wi-fi um a lot of them are more password protected now so catching free wi-fi without going in a business and asking for the password is getting harder to do a lot of them are starting to realize people are using parking lots to catch their wi-fi and so they're protecting their wi-fi a little more than they used to mostly because things like youtube exist and people go on and be like hey this place is great. Come over here and steal their Wi-Fi. And then they're like, whoa, wait, we need to put a cap on this situation. We're, we're using this to bring in customers, not for people to catch it for free in our parking lot. So I feel like it's going to catch up uh, with us a little bit. And I just personally prefer knowing that when I want internet, I have it. And it's also on a, I, I personally am a big fan of month to month agreements. Like, one of the reasons I got into prepaid phones is like I hated what it costs to get out if you signed a contract where you were trapped. And so I got really sick of that. And then they tried to come up with some new fake ones, especially T-Mobile had this whole thing where it was like, we're like contract free. But what they did was they got you in with the phone. And if you left them, you had to pay the full amount of the phone where if you stayed with it, it was just a new version of the same thing where, where they were keeping you for a year. It wasn't about a contract agreement for the plan. It was about a contract agreement to pay off the phone. And so you at least couldn't leave them for a year. And then they're depending on you wanting a new phone before you reach the end of that agreement and so you're you're just stacking up dollars that you owe to them and they say you can leave if you want to but you owe us all this money um and as we all know the credit score game is in and uh, any threat to that um could be harmful so in general xfinity hotspots do not pay for a 30-day pass 
it, use the complimentary hour if it comes in handy. If you need it for a day and you're in a spot where the signal's really strong, grab it up for a day. If you have a friend who has Xfinity provider in their house, apartment, whatever, and they're willing to give you your, uh, your, your, their pass for an emergency, definitely use it. But otherwise, Xfinity was not a success at all. All right, see you next time.